think he'll recover? I don't know. It's too soon to say. We should let him rest. He's been very feeble for weeks. He can't get up. He doesn't speak. Do you think we should call a doctor? Call a doctor? Here? You're right. Let's just hope he wakes up one of these days. Come on, my friend. Hang on. Don't give up. Please, let me get to Wake up, Michael. Come on, you have to wake up. Who are you? Who's there? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. The silence. This darkness. Where am I? Damn it. I can't... I can't remember. Where are you? Where are you hiding? Michael, please wake up. You have to wake up. Michael? Is that my name? Please tell me where I am. I, I can't remember anything. What's happening? What is this place? Please, tell me. Wake up, Michael. Please wake up. Wake up now. Don't go! Uh, please! Uh, come back! Come back! This silence. This darkness. This emptiness. Good morning. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, but... Now don't be alarmed. I'm glad you feel strong enough to get out of bed. That's wonderful news. I must say you're looking much better, considering what you've been through, of course. Who are you? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive my manners. You've been with us uh, for so long that I forgot that you don't know who we are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rod Atkinson. I'm, well, I was. I was the director of the Municipal Property Registry before, well, you know, before the world collapsed on us. Ah. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Atkinson. But... Where am I? What is this place? You are in what I venture to call our home. Our humble, hopefully temporary home. This is one of the many trailers that make up the refugee camp. And believe me, we can consider ourselves lucky to live between these four walls. Most of the inhabitants of this hellhole excuse my crude language, have nothing more than plastic tarps and cardboard for shelter. Wait a second. Did you say refugee camp? Yes, of course. The facility for temporary accommodation of disaster victims is what they called it. You know, after the army declared martial law following the catastrophe, you look a little confused, if you don't mind my saying so. Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. I'm afraid not. Let me ask you. Can you tell me what I'm doing here? Yes, of course. I think we owe you an explanation. A few days after the great wave, we found you lying in a ditch near the airport. You were badly injured and unconscious. We couldn't just leave you there. Someone had already stolen your luggage and identification. It was awful. So we decided to take care of you ourselves and brought you here. You've been with us ever since. By the way, I should tell you that when we found you, your clothes were ripped to shreds, so we threw them away. The clothes you're wearing now are mine. You'll find more things in that wardrobe. If you need anything, just help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. But... The Great Wave? What are you talking about? Well, what would I be talking about? That damned, excuse my language, explosion that brought ruin to all of us. The origin of this filthy new world that now seems to be our permanent reality. But do you really not remember? Do you really not remember 
anything about all this? I feel a little weak and dizzy, Mr. Atkinson. Excuse me, I'm afraid I can't. I can't remember a thing. Hmm, I see. There have been many cases like yours in the camp. Try to rest and not to get too agitated. Well, there's one thing I can tell you. You can consider yourself fortunate. There's nothing nice to remember about recent times, believe me. You said, with us. Who else lives here? Ah, yes, of course. I still haven't properly introduced my family to you. Now is a bad time, but I promise to make proper introductions later. My wife and I sleep in the other room, and, well, little Colin sleeps with us. Colin? Yes. Colin is our only child. Our one ray of hope since the catastrophe. I'm going to confess something to you. Colin is the only reason my wife and I still struggle to keep going in this new world. We would have given up a long time ago if it weren't for him. Of course. I understand. So that was your wife's voice that woke me up a few minutes ago, right? My wife? No, that's impossible. My wife has been with me in the other room the whole time. We haven't come out of there for hours. But I'm glad you're feeling better and are fully conscious now. I guess we could say you've been reborn. And although the circumstances aren't the best, simply being alive nowadays is practically a luxury. So, welcome to our home. From what you've told me, I see that you've saved my life. I'm very grateful, Mr. Atkinson. No, please. You don't have to thank us. We just did what we had to. It's our moral obligation to uphold the ethical principles of civilization in this new world. But call me Rod, please. And, well, we also did it for Colin, you see. What kind of future does he face if we accept that it's every man for himself, that no one cares about anyone else? It's a terrifying prospect, don't you think? We're just doing whatever we can to avoid that future, that's all. Rod! Rod! Please excuse me, but I have to leave you now. No, wait, please. What's happening? Uh, don't go yet. I'm sorry, I understand that you have a lot of questions to ask me. But now isn't the time. Believe me, I promise to answer each and every one of your questions in peace and quiet later. Sorry, but I have to go. Uh, uh... Rod, please, quickly! Okay, all right. Now that you're feeling better, you can go out and take a walk around the camp. But please, be very careful out there. The world you knew before is gone. Heed my warning, don't touch anything. Don't talk to anyone. And don't get mixed up in anything. At least until someone explains to you how things work in this new world the Great Wave left us. Everything has changed so much out there. All right. Thanks for the advice. Ah. One more thing before I go. You've been with us for quite a while now, and we don't even know what to call you. What is your name? My name? Michael. My name is Michael. Very pleased to meet you, Michael. We'll talk again later, I promise. Michael. That's the disembodied voice called me. That must be my name. Wake up, Michael. That's all she said. Leaving me in this immense void. I can't remember anything. A great wave? New world? Refugee camp? But what the devil could have happened out there? I think it might be a good idea to go out there and take a look. A depressing sight. A damp mattress and a bed frame and dirty rumpled sheets. This is the bed where I've been convalescing all this time. Well, look at that. When I pulled back the sheet, part of it got torn on the spring sticking out of the bed frame. I hope Rod doesn't notice. Hmm. There's a very worn old notebook hidden under the lid. The cover is practically falling off the spiral binding. It looks like someone stashed it here some time ago, and then forgot about it. Good God, what the hell happened here? Rod was right. I don't know what hit this place, but wherever it was, it struck into it its very foundations without any mercy whatsoever. What's happening now? 
You better hide, dude. Don't you know that it's dangerous to show your face when the cleanup brigades come into the camp? You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, you could put it that way. Well, welcome to your new home. I'm Hank, but everyone calls me the Hunter. I'm... Michael. But what's going on up there? Nothing, Mike, just routine. The cleanup brigades are taking away a sick person, a dissolved. You know how it is, just doing their job. Ironically, that house belongs to one of the camp moles. Those traitorous scumbags. Brigades, dissolved, moles. I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I can't remember anything. Oh, I see. You're a blanket. Well, you better get up to speed real quick if you want to survive here, Mike. Find me if you need help, dude. I can get you whatever you need. Doesn't matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. That's why they call me the Hunter. All right. I'll remember that. shot that poor man in cold blood. But why did they do that? Hey, Hank? I'm afraid he's gone. I'm not gonna do it. Too many things around me have already gone up in smoke. The entire world has been reduced to ashes. Ouch! Damn it! This vacant lot is full of trash and broken glass. I managed to rip open the sole of my foot in a rusty nail. Hey! It's not a good idea to walk around barefoot in this enormous trash heap. You won't get very far without shoes. Yeah, thanks for the tip. The tip is yours to keep. But if you come near my things, you're a dead man. Understood? Wait, I recognize you. Aren't you the guy Rod's been taking care of in his trailer all this time? Yes, I am. Do you know Rod? Of course I do. Everyone in the camp knows Rod. You owe him your life. Don't doubt that for a second. Nowadays, no one in his right mind would do what he did for you. For a total stranger. Yes, I'm very grateful to him. But tell me, can I ask you a few questions? I've been hearing about an enormous explosion, the Great Wave. What on earth are they talking about? But what kind of question is that? Where have you been all this time? Sleeping in a cave? Well, you could say that. The Great Wave is the reason we're confined here like animals. The entire world went to hell in a handcart that day, and we went with it. I've been able to see that with my own eyes. Can you tell me anything else? Okay, I'll tell you what I know. The Great Wave hit us one Friday afternoon right out of the blue. I remember it perfectly because I'd just come out of an important meeting at that precise moment. I'd made a lot of money from a very fat contract. Yes, sirry, Bob. Very, very fat. First, we felt the ground quaking. As if a volcano was about to erupt right under our feet. I had to get out of my car and run. Then came the explosions. Glass broke. Buildings toppled. And then for weeks, the stench of corpses rotting in the streets. In just a few hours, <coughs> that damn great wave sent us all with our businesses, our money, and our convertibles straight back to the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages. Of course. Are you surprised? In a matter of minutes, we were left with no electricity, no water, no communication. And after the initial chaos, the dissolved started to show up. And that horrible gash opened up in the sky. That stupid breach up there that no one in this hellhole has bothered to explain to us. <laughs> The fact is that the remains of the old system only held up for a few weeks. And through the cracks, what you see around you started seeping in. The new world, right? Yes, indeed. You catch on fast. The new world was here to stay. Welcome to the future, son. Not exactly the way you pictured it, huh? 
confined. Do you mean we can't leave the refugee camp? Refugee camp? <laughs> I've always found that term amusing. It seems like things on the other side of the fence work a little better. But here, look around you. Does this look like a refugee camp? It's an army detention camp. <laughs> and you're a prisoner. Once you come in here, you lose everything, even your name. To them, you're nothing more than a rat. Just another camp rat. You'd never be able to get through the gate, especially if you don't know anyone or don't have any contacts on the outside. Doesn't matter who you might have been before the old world collapsed. Believe me, I speak from experience. If you're just a camp rat, I'm afraid the only way out of here is feet first. I don't know if you get my meaning. Of course I do. Thanks for your encouraging words. You can keep the words, but come near my things and you're a dead man. The shooting. Could you explain to me what just happened here? Explain what exactly? That show the cleanup brigades put on? Someone got <laughs> too chatty and ratted out a sick person, that's all. There's usually a pact of silence in the camp. No one likes to see one of their own in those ambulances. But in this case, the dissolved was a relative of one of the camp mole. Ironic, isn't it? But they shot a man. Yes, so they did. So what? <sighs> the price of human life has gotten a lot cheaper lately. That needn't surprise anyone these days. Did you say dissolved? Of course, the dissolved. But what the hell's wrong with you? Those people are a real plague. They're sick and, so they say, highly contagious. Let me give you a piece of advice about them. If you see one, run the other way like he was the devil himself. Even if they don't give you that <laughs> deadly disease or drive you crazy with their trances, the cleanup brigades will kill you for hiding one. You saw it with your own eyes. They don't even respect their own camp moles. A camp mole? What is that exactly? A spy. A stool pigeon. It's in the army's interest to control the camp from inside. And so they pay some of the inhabitants to feed them information about what happens on this side of the fence. Who comes in? Who goes out? Who causes trouble? And, of course, who gets sick? They're scumbags, but very well-paid scumbags. And they have certain privileges that no one else in here has. Never trust a mole. They'll do anything to hang on to the favors the army gives them in this hellhole. Okay. I'll take your advice. You're welcome. But stay away from the shopping cart or I'll rip your guts out. Got it? Tell me about Rod Atkinson. Well, I don't know him very well, but they say he's decent enough. Too decent for the times we're living in. <laughs> Did you know that before coming here, he was someone important? I think he worked for the government, and he still has some good contacts on the outside. But they're not good enough to get that stupid do-gooder and his family out of here. Stupid do-gooder? Well, you know how it is. Rod is one of those good Samaritans who think they can save the world. He has helped a lot of people in the camp. But I think he's going to run into problems. I reckon that he's too weak for these times. I don't know how long he'll be able to survive. You said he had a son. A pretty good reason to hang on, don't you think? Ah, uh, yes, Colin. I haven't seen that kid running around here for some time. Do you know if he's all right? I don't know. I still haven't seen him. His father told me about him. Well, I'm glad he's not anywhere near me. <laughs> That brat doesn't have anything better to do than to try to snoop in my shopping cart. Well, I'll be going on my way. Good luck to you, pal. Just be sure to stay away from my things. Let's see. I could swear that the lid is just the right size for this drum. Perfect. Damn it! 
What's going on? <coughs> this damn shithole is going to be the end of us. <coughs> I'll have to do this quickly before this man stops coughing. Well, let's see what we have here. A person can't even breathe in this hole anymore. I don't see anything but rotten food, tattered clothes, and trash. <coughs> Wait a minute. It seems like there's also a small billfold with a bunch of credit cards. They mean to kill us what the hell is this guy doing That's with so much plastic want. money? <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Good. The mechanism gave way on the first try, but the car is trashed. For my sake, I hope that guy outside never finds out about this. Okay, let's see how well this protruding bed spring can cut. I'll use a little of what's in the bottle to soak the bandages. Here goes. I'll use the bandages on my foot. I hope the alcohol is enough to keep it from getting infected. Let's pray this improvised remedy doesn't lead to a delightful case of gangrene. What bastard put a lid on the drum? You tried to suffocate me, you bunch of assholes! I think that guy out there just discovered the reason for a sudden coughing fit. Some coward in this shithole wanted to suffocate me! Me! Who would? Who would? Come back here so I can give you back your lid, you son of a bitch! Did you hear that noise, Rob? What's going on out there? I don't know. I'll go have a look. I think it's that poor drunk who's always hanging around the trailer. He's kicking up a fuss again. It's a good thing poor Colin can't hear his insults. Don't ever say anything like that again, Rod. I'm sorry, hon. I wasn't thinking. What are you doing here? Get out of here! You've no business being in this room! Rod, I I'm sorry. I... <coughs> but what's going on? Get out of here, Michael! You didn't see anything, understood? Out! Out! Excuse my outburst, Michael. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have behaved that way. It's not like me. But this new world brings out the worst in all of us. It's just that I can't stand to see Colin suffer this way. So for your own good, please, stay away from this room. Away? Why? It's no use trying to hide it. You're bound to find out sooner or later. Colin is very sick. And the authorities claim his illness is highly contagious. Highly contagious? Is he one of the dissolved? Michael! I won't let anyone use that word in my house! Yes, Colin caught that damn disease. And what exactly does the disease consist of? I don't know, Michael. No one really does. The only news is what the army brings us. They say the disease is highly contagious. And it's our duty to turn over all victims to the cleanup brigades. But no one has ever come back after being carried off in one of those ambulances. No one. So we can't let them take Colin, do you understand? Yes, of course I understand. They say that all the victims are condemned. That there's no salvation for anyone. That at the end of their suffering and their trances lies certain death. I think that even the army is afraid of the victims. Really strange things happen around them, Michael. Things you wouldn't believe. What things happen around people infected with the disease? Strange things with no possible explanation. In their trances, they... They go places, Michael. They bring back information. They know things. 
They talk to people who are no longer with us. And we've been living like this for weeks. The things that are happening around Colin are getting more and more confusing and hard to bear. Talking to the dead? Jesus. This man's nerves are shot from the exhaustion and stress. But how did Colin get infected? We don't know. No one knows how the disease is spread. The only thing we know is that the disease appeared after the catastrophe and that it's spreading like wildfire. So the great wave brought the dissolved with it? Yes, but don't use that word again. Not in this house, anyway. It's so cruel and disrespectful. In effect, that's the only thing we know for sure about all this insanity. The great wave took everything from us and left us with this epidemic. What's happening to Colin is terrible. If only there was something I could do. Well, Michael, you can help us. I'm convinced that our finding you was no coincidence. You've got to help us. But you said yourself that all the victims are condemned. What can I do? No, all is not lost. In the camp, there are rumors of a cure. It seems that in the city, on the other side of the fence, the victims have access to a drug. But we can't get it here. And my contacts out there, well, let's just say they can't do anything to help. So there's a drug that can cure them? Yes. But they say that producing it takes a long time and is very expensive. And so it's reserved for city dwellers who can afford to pay for it. Get us that drug, Michael. I beg of you, please. Colin's time is running out. Getting involved looks dangerous. I saw that shooting out there. There's also the possibility of infection. Infection? Are you afraid for your life, Michael? Without our help, You'd be dead right now. Dead. Don't forget that. What's more, I could help you in return. I could help you get back what you lost. Don't you see? Give me back what I lost? But you hardly know me, Rod. I know the essential part, Michael. I know that you're a blankhead. Blankhead? What the devil does that mean? A blankhead is a person with no memories, who can't remember anything. It seems that the Great Wave had an enormous neurological impact on certain people, Michael. You're not the only one, or even the worst case. There are people who even forgot how to talk and how to walk after the explosion. Some ended up dying of starvation. They forgot what food looked like, how to chew it, even that eating was a necessity. You can consider yourself lucky. You still remember how to keep yourself alive. And that's the important thing. The natural recovery process is slow. It can take months, if at all. Listen to me, Michael. A man without memories is just a shadow. Or even worse, he's nobody. I still have some contacts out there. I was an important man in the municipal government. I could trace your name, your data in public records, your fingerprints. I could restore your whole life in the blink of an eye. But please, help us. I'm grateful for your help, Rod. And for everything you people have done for me. But... Listen to me, Michael. We know that it's possible that our son is condemned to die. In fact, my wife and I have everything prepared for when he leaves us. Our child is the only thing that keeps us holding on in the new world. Nothing would have any meaning for us without him. So if there is even the slightest chance of saving him, we are prepared to do whatever it takes. Please, Michael, help us. For God's sake, listen to him. He's just a child. Rod, come in here, quickly! Bring us that cure, and we'll help you get your life back. Colin is our only hope in this new world. Help us save our future, and I'll give you back your past. I promise you. Goodbye, Michael. No, Rod, wait. Bring a drug? Is he out of his mind? That man wants me to put his son's life in my hands? I can barely remember who I am. When I probably wouldn't last more than a few hours out there. But Rod was right. A man without a past is nothing more than his shadow. He offered to help me get my life back, my memories. So if I want answers, I have only one possible course of action, to get that drug. Wait a minute. Before leaving, I should write down everything important I find out in this notebook. It might come in handy.
if, as Rod says, I'm one of the blank heads the great wave left in its wake. Nothing of interest. The floor of the room is littered with useless junk like this. But wait a minute. I think I can see something sticking out from under that piece of wood. Hey! You filthy rat! Get out of my house! Do you hear me? Out! I... Forgive me. We've got nothing left for you to steal. Go back to your sewer, you filthy rat! Scram! No. You've got it all wrong. I haven't come to take anything. But wait a minute. I recognize you. Weren't you with the man they shot out there a while back? Yes. My name is Misha. And that man is my husband. But what happened? Why did they shoot your husband? It's all your fault. All because of you cat rats. One of you reported him for harboring a dissolved. And those army pigs opened the fire without even caring who they were aiming at. Or how hard my husband had worked for them. So the lady the cleaner brigades took away from this house was a dissolved. That was my mother. I'm never gonna see her again. Damn filthy rats. Are you satisfied? It was you people that brought death to this family. Why is everything all over the floor? Were you robbed? They left us nothing. Those envious rats took everything. They've been hanging around waiting for days. It seems like those bums have a sixth sense about where it dissolved is being hidden. When they saw my husband injured and lying on the ground, they forced their way in and looted our house. Bums? Envious rats? Who are you talking about exactly? Them! All of them! Everyone living here in this camp envies us. They envy who we are, what we have, our privileges, our army contacts. So they envy you because your husband is a mole. Is that right? Don't call him that, you worm. He collaborates with the forces of law and order. That's his job. And in this collaboration with law enforcement, wasn't turning in others of the dissolved one of your husband's duties? Shut up! Shut up! You envy us too! You're just like the rest of the rats in this camp. And what are the three of us going to do when my husband's gone? We'll lose everything. The house, the money, our privileges. You said the three of us. Is there someone else in the family? We have two children, two small boys. And in this camp, envy eats away at everybody. Now we'll be outcasts. No one will help us when my husband is gone. Winter will come, our money will run out, and my children will starve. Those two brats wear me down with their antics. I have to chase after them all the time, but they're my children, and none of this is their fault. How is your husband? He's badly injured. One of the bullets went through his stomach. He's not gonna make it. He's really suffering. He's in excruciating pain. If we at least had some morphine to ease his pain. What privileges are you going to lose? As a collaborator, my husband always received special treatment from the army. More generous rations of food and water. A little money, clothes, a treat now and then for the kids. And now all of that's gonna end. We won't be able to leave the camp. When he dies, they'll take away his gate pass. We'll die locked up in here. Like you rats. Hmm. 
Did she say a gate pass? Listen, Misha. I can help you. And just how are you gonna help us, rat? There's something important I urgently need to get from the other side of the fence. While I'm out there, I could also get some morphine for your husband. I've heard that things are better in the city. It shouldn't be too hard for me to find some. But first, I need to get out of the camp. Like I told you, my husband has a pass that gets him through the gate. I could lend it to you, but I don't trust you. I don't trust you or any other filthy rat in this camp. Beat it! Get out of here! If I want to get my identity back, I need that drug for the dissolve. And to get it, I have to leave the camp. I have to do whatever it takes to gain this woman's trust. No matter how unpleasant I find her screams and insults. Listen to me. I'm not just another camp rat. I'm your friend. I want to be your friend. You told me you were worried about winter coming. Let me help you. I'll bring you food. Food for your children. Then will you trust me? I don't know. Bring me the food first. First you bring me food for my children. And then we'll talk about that past. I'll do it. Hi, kids. Hello, sir. What are you up to? We're doing target practice. We're going to be real good shots. Someday, we'll get those pigs who shot Dad. How awful. These children must have seen the cleanup brigade shoot their father out there. Poor kids. And how is the target practice going? Bad at the moment. We need a real target, or we'll never be able to hit those soldiers. Yeah, we need a better target. Thank you. Now we'll really be able to become the best shots in the camp. My name is Michael. Hello, Michael. I need your help, boys. How can we help you, Michael? I have to get something from inside your house. It's something I need so that I can help your father. Understand? But your mother is very agitated, and I need you to give me a hand with it. It's a mission. What do you want us to do, Michael? I need you to get your mother out of the house for a few minutes. Just long enough for me to go in and get what I need. Do you think you can do that? Of course, we're big boys. I'll owe you. I promise to give you a reward. Okay, let's do it. A mission. <laughs> Better not. Knowing what's inside that room, I have no interest in going in. Oh, my head! Uh, what the hell's going on? Oh, God! My head feels like it's gonna explode! Michael, please, help us! Help us! Please, remember, Beechwood Oracle. Repent! It's the sun! Was it our fault? Did we do it? Yes! We did it! Enough! Uh, please! Enough! Please, Michael, help us! Only you can do it. Remember, Beechwood Oracle. Good God! What are these images? And that woman's voice? It's the same one that woke me up in the trailer. I'm trying! I'm trying to remember! Uh, stop tormenting me! I hope Rod helps me find some answers. If not, I'll go mad. Absolutely mad. Greetings, pal. What's this? Are you proposing a trade? Because if you are, you came to the right place. What do you sell here? Anything you can eat or drink. Anything that fits into a box or a bottle. For other types of goods, talk to the hunter directly. What do you need? Liquor? Cigarettes? Food? I could use some food. You're in luck. We have some of these emergency food rations the authorities distributed. Among the neediest inhabitants of the camp, 
in the first weeks after the great wave. You know, a bunch of them just uh, happened to fall into our hands. What do you have to offer in exchange? I have this pack of cigarettes. Virginia tobacco. There's not much of this in the camp. That's a good start. But it's not enough. The pack's been open and several cigarettes are missing. I'd need something more. Hmm. Would a bottle of liquor do? Fantastic. I think that's a fair price. I'll take both of them. Here you go, pal. The food package is all yours. Enjoy it in good health. Better not. It's not that I don't trust my culinary skills, it's that this food is pre-cooked and ready to eat. Here, this is what I promised you. That's all the food you brought? This will barely feed us for two days! I'm sorry, it's very complicated getting more in the camp. I only wanted to show you that you can trust me, that I can help you. That's what all you rats in this trash heap say? But in the end, only thing you're interested in is taking advantage of my husband and me. I've held up my part of the bargain. Isn't that proof enough? Listen. Let me have that pass to get out of the camp, and I promise I'll come back with the morphine you need to ease your husband's suffering. Ah, okay. But you better hurry. Here. What's this? A bracelet? It's like an ID badge. Wear it and the soldiers will recognize you. It won't just get you out of the camp. It'll also help you avoid all kinds of problems with the army once you reach the city. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing by giving it to you. Just don't betray me, you rat. Bring me that morphine from my husband, and I promise you, I'll give you lots of money in return. Much more money than you could earn in a lifetime in this shithole. No, that's not necessary. We never said anything about money. I have to know you're coming back. I don't trust any of you, and I know that money is the only thing that'll make you keep your word. All you camp rats are alike. Now get out of my sight, and don't make me regret this. And don't come back without my husband's morphine. There'll be a fat wad of cash waiting for you. Okay. Go through that gate, and I'll blow your head off with one shot, Brad. Hmm. Do you need to get a closer look at what I have on my wrist? Wait a minute. Look, he's got on one of those ID bracelets the camp moles wear. Those cockroaches are very useful to us in here. Lower your gun and let him leave. You heard him. Get out of here, rats. So, I enter the city. It welcomes me with its most merciless and bitter grimace. What I see before my eyes is not what I expected. Doomsday made it here, too. Even if no one in the refugee camp knows it yet. Damn it. The city looks as bruised and battered by the catastrophe as the rest of us.
help me, please. Help me. Don't let them find me in the street after curfew. They'll take me to the refugee camp. Help me, please. But don't make any noise. There's a patrol just round the corner. But what is it you need me to do? It's almost curfew. I need a place to sleep. I need a place to hide. Or they'll send me to the refugee camp. Don't you understand? What is all this about a curfew? At curfew, the soldiers want the streets cleared. And the way they see it, if you're out on the street after curfew, it means that you've got nowhere to go. You don't have a home. You don't belong here. And that makes you a rat. And so they take you to the refugee camp. I can't go to the camp, understand? I can't go there. You need a roof over your head. And you don't have anywhere to go. I used to, but it doesn't exist anymore. I owned an apartment a few blocks from here. The block was badly damaged by the Great Wave, but it was still standing. And what happened to your home? This morning, we had to evacuate the area in a hurry. We ran out in the streets with whatever we had on. Apparently, the foundation was starting to crumble. And a few hours later, all that was left of my home was a pile of smoke and rubble, with 40 years of memories buried beneath it. But I can't let them take me to the camp. I need to get into another house before the curfew. Please, help me. Okay, give me those bolt cutters. I'll see what I can do. This house is empty, but the army has sealed it off. If I can just get this padlock off before curfew, I'll be safe. I need to get in here. But please, don't make too much noise. If the soldiers find us, they won't hesitate to kill us. Impossible. I'm sorry. I can't do anything with this. I need to get in there. I need to get in! I'm looking for a place. Something like a pharmaceutical warehouse. Would you know anything about that? I don't really know. There's a small medical center just outside the city limits. I suppose you mean that, right? They built it in a hurry. Just knocked it together. After the Great Wave. No one really knows what it's for. But there are vehicles going in and out of the place all the time. Whatever they're doing in there, they're keeping it very secret. Not even my daughter would tell me what goes on inside. Did you say your daughter? Yes, my daughter. My little Uma. She works there as a nurse. I'm afraid she left me. I suppose she got tired of living with a frail, sick old man like me. Because one day she simply left the house and I haven't seen her since. It's been months now. I think she was right to leave me. These times are hard enough. You don't want to burn yourself with someone like me. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Help me, please. Send us a sign, Lord. We need a sign from you. Hey, wait a minute. I know that voice. Are we guilty of arousing your rage? Did we do it? Speak with your tongue of fire, Lord. Purge us with unrelenting justice. Send us a sign. Is this our doing? Are you punishing us for our arrogance? Unleash your thunderous voice, Lord. Release us from this intolerable uncertainty. Did we do it? Send us a sign. 
I'm getting a strong impression that man's a fanatic and a little bit deranged. But his sermon made me curious. What could he mean by, we did it? The thunderous voice of your angel through the gash. That is your sign. Good idea. I can try to remove the damp earth with these shards of glass. I've managed to excavate a little bit, but these shards of glass are too small and blunt. Maybe I need something bigger that cuts better to make a decent hole. I think the man hanging on that cross has already had his share of nails. Illuminate us with your fiery voice, Lord. Let's see. Send us a if I wedge one of the ends of the plank under the statue's pedestal, the other part will rest directly on the base of the toppled column. Lord, that we do it. Illuminate us. Send us a sign with your just and vengeful arm. Is this our fault? Listen! It's the fiery breath of God. The Lord has sent us his sign. And I was right. It is all our fault. We did it. And we have aroused his fury. But what the hell's going on here? No, that's the sign. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Repent, all ye sinners. It's the atmospheric phenomenon I've been hearing so much about. That infernal sound coming from the crack in the sky. It's terrifying. That is the sign. We did it. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. My children, God has spoken to us with his darkest voice. Haven't you heard him? But there's still time. All is not lost. We still have time. Salvation lies in the place where it all began. In the ruins. At the source. We must return to the ruins of the temple. We must return. We must. Well, look at that. Next to this enormous hunk of glass, the colored glass shards I picked up earlier look ridiculous. I'd better get rid of them. I'll do this very carefully, so that the glass doesn't break in two. Perfect. The hole I've dug is big enough to get to the other side of the fence. God, there are dozens, uh, hundreds of corpses hanging from the branches. What could have drawn all these people here? What kind of pain, what kind of desperation brought them here? These are the corpses of ordinary people who were living their ordinary lives in their ordinary little worlds up to a very short time ago. 
Could any of them have imagined meeting an end like this back then? Forgotten and nameless, swaying in the breeze like marionettes. And all those savages in uniforms did was close the park. They didn't even bother to cut their bodies down from the trees. I'm afraid that tonight, there are too many dark stars to count in Suicide Park. Forget it. They would make a pretty gruesome pinata. Maybe with the help of the crowbar, I can get the subway sign off the wall. Damn it! I've managed to tear it down, but the subway sign is broken in two. Like a lasso, like in the westerns. But even so, I'm sure that these goons would realize that the generator was missing right away. Okay, let's see if I can open this. Got it. Let's see. I'm sure that if I tug on it a little. Good. The upholstery came off along with one of the elastic bands that was holding it to the seat. What's happening? What is this? What the hell's going on here? Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. As dead as that tree is, it still looks strong enough to tie the rope to. Before I go down, I'll leave the heavy stuff here, in case the rope doesn't support my weight. Underneath the surface, there must be many more of these stone things I see sticking out of the water. No doubt they're the remains of a structure that sank here. Hmm. It seems like a small fragment of one of them is loose. I'll get my stuff.
This quilted fabric fits the size of the window perfectly. First, I'll take down this advertising poster. Okay, let's try this. And let's cross our fingers that the seat cover absorbs the noise of the breaking glass. And if the soldiers next door find me, they'll blow my head off without bothering to ask questions. Uh, you've done it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm safe now. God bless you, stranger. You saved my life. Take care of yourself, old man. And I don't have to tell you, don't open the door to strangers. Frankly, I don't think that this is the sign Reverend Blake was talking about so fervently. The head of the lion above the flames. I think this must be yours. The head of the lion. The head of the lion above the flames. The ruins of the temple still exist. Salvation is still possible. We can prevent it. We can still prevent it. Don't you understand? The annihilation of time. The wrath of God for our arrogance. There's still time. I have to return to the ruins of the temple. I have to go back to the ruins of the temple. Wait a minute. Whew. There's no question in my mind, this man is a complete lunatic. I could toss it, but I doubt if those dogs are going to pick it up and return it to me. I'm afraid these beasts belong to a species that's somewhat harder to domesticate. So, let's see. I just made a primitive homemade slingshot. Michael. Hi, kids. We got Mom out of the house. Now what about that reward? Yes. I think I have something you might like. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. They're just kids. And this could get them into trouble. I know perfectly well what they're going to use it for. But their aim is amazing. And a little commotion on the camp fence could be a good thing for everyone. Besides, they want to do something for their father. And those pigs at the gate deserve a surprise. What is it, Michael? Tell us, what is it? I know it's something you're really going to like. Here you go. It's a slingshot. It's a slingshot! Thank you, Michael. With this, we'll be able to hit the watchtowers. Come on, let's try it! That'll teach you pigs. Serious. Come on, let's go. You hit him. Haha, <laughs> yes. So what do we do now? I don't know. We've got to get out of here. Quickly. Run. Oh, I better take this with me.
Let's see what's on the other side of this hedge. No! Please! These visions! Uh, my head! You won't get any of his things. I won't allow it. Do you hear me? Michael, is that you? Thank God we found you. It's me, Chris. Don't you recognize me? But there is a solution, Michael. All is not lost. There is still a possibility of salvation for us. For each and every one of us. You have to stop this, Michael. You have to quit. I can't do it. It's destroying us, don't you see? It's killing us. It's that <laughs> demon inside me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. These visions are getting more intense all the time. The pain is unbearable. Who's Chris? Salvation is still possible, he said. Could that be true? And once again, that female voice has been haunting me since I woke up. Who is she? Why was she so distressed? What the hell happened to us? Or is going to happen to us? Wait a minute. That guy is... The suicide victim who was hanging from this tree. No. Don't do it. Please. No! Good God. I saw him hang himself. Okay, I'll wear the gloves to cut the electrified wire. Perfect. Let's see what's down here. It's a trapdoor, and it looks like it hasn't been used in a long, long time. What is this place? Where the devil am I? It seems like the small building at the ground level is just camouflage. The most important part is here underground. Are all of them dissolved? How many patients can there be packed in here? Dozens? Hundreds? This is horrible! Let's see if this grate can be removed. <coughs> Perfect. It looks like this hole leads to a passageway on the other side. There's a bunch of papers stuck to the door of the closet. There seems to be some type of bureaucratic form among them. I'd rather use a key to open this case, but I'm a bit short on time, so... Who is it? Who's there? Oh, uh, excuse me, I... What are you doing here? Have you come to seal something? Take one more step and I'll call the soldiers. No, wait, uh, please, don't do that. Security, this is Nurse Uma Grundy. I need you to come right away. No, wait!
Wait a minute. Did you say Uma? Nurse Uma? Yes, that's my name. Wait, please don't turn me in. I know your father. I saved his life just a few hours ago. They were going to deport him to the refugee camp, but I was able to stop it. My God, did you say my father? Tell me, how is he? Has anything happened to him? Don't worry, Uma. He's safe. He told me about you and your work in this place. He was worried. He wants to know that you're all right. Wait, please don't turn me in. This is nurse Uma Grundy. It turned out to be a false alarm. You don't have to come. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. You did the right thing. My name is Michael. But now you should explain why you burst in here like that. What are you looking for, Michael? I came to get medicine. I need a cure for the dissolved. Cure? There's no such thing. You won't find it here or anywhere else. The authorities distributed a memo among the medical staff months ago. I'm sure you can still find a copy of it around here somewhere. It told us that they've definitely abandoned the search for a medicine. You made a mistake risking your life to get in here. The only thing we store here is pain. This place is a tomb for those poor infected devils, but also for the people who work here. I'm sorry, Michael. The dissolved are condemned to death. No, that can't be. There has to be a solution, a cure. Oh, man. Poor Rod. Poor Colin. I should be going now. Talk to my father, Michael. Tell him that I'm all right, that he shouldn't worry, that we'll be seeing each other soon, very soon. Let's see. Inside, I only see dust and old papers and a tiny key. Let's see if it's the key to this closet. Bingo. According to one of the cleanup brigade's forums, this is the device they use to navigate during their raids. Sort of like an electronic map. It looks like some satellites are actually still working up the Great Wave. Something I could easily confirm if this contraption had batteries in it. Their corpses deserve a decent burial, not to be put in a dirty, used plastic bag. Hmm. This street is even more desolate and silent than it was before. I guess while I was in the subterranean hospital for the dissolved, the soldiers called the curfew. What are you doing out here, ma'am? What's the matter? It's my brother. He's disappeared. We don't know where he is. What do you mean he's disappeared? Well, we haven't seen him since he spoke to you. Since he ran out of the church. We've been searching for him for hours and can't find him anywhere. And you don't have any idea where he might have gone? No. He simply ran out of the door, completely out of control. I've never seen him so upset. And we haven't heard anything from him since. I just know that something terrible has happened to him. My brother is very sick and he shouldn't be out there alone and unprotected. I fear the worst. Calm down. There's no reason to think that anything has happened to him. I have a feeling that something awful has happened. I'm sure of it. Besides, the soldiers have already called the curfew. If they find him on the street alone and lost, in his condition, my brother is a very beloved and respected person. But those beasts don't care who he is. I understand. We have to get off the street. Please, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. Tell him we're waiting for him. Of course. I'll do that.
The camp is closed, Rat. Get away from the gate. But I have to come in. It's urgent. What happened? There's no understanding, you worms. Always wanting to get out of here. Once you're outside, you're dying to get back in. One of our soldiers was killed, and the camp will remain closed until the matter is cleared up. So take a hike. There was an attack? Yes. Someone hit one of the sentries in the watchtowers with a rock and made him fall out. He was killed instantly. Luckily, it seems there was a witness who saw the perpetrators launch the projectile, and they have been detained. But we never trust the testimony of a rat, so we're waiting for the criminals to confess or for the murder weapon to turn up. I don't think it's going to take very long to get the truth out of these kids or to find the weapon they used to commit the crime. Good God. What have I done? I knew I shouldn't have gotten them mixed up in this. But they're just a couple of scared kids. Don't you see that? What are you planning on doing with them? Killing an official is punishable by death. And martial law is quite clear in this respect. They acted as adults. And they will pay for their actions as adults. As soon as they confess, or we find the weapon they used to commit the crime, we'll take care of matters. Do you have a problem with the law being enforced? You're nothing but a gang of warped psychopathic pigs. One more word and I'll blow your head off right now, bastard. I couldn't care less what privileges that bracelet might give you. Get out of my sight. Those pigs are going to kill the boys, and it'll be my fault. I'll be responsible for their deaths. I can't let that happen. I have to do something, and fast. But what? Before I go down, I'll leave the heavy stuff here, in case the rope doesn't support my weight. corpse of Reverend Blake. His neck is broken. In his delirium, he must not have seen the rope I left tied around the tree. I must have fallen from the top when he was trying to get down here. But what the hell was he looking for here? Damn it. If I don't prevent it, those bastards in uniform are going to execute the boys. For God's sake, I have to think of some way to save them. And I have to do it now. Let's see what's in here. Good idea. I could use Reverend Blake as a scapegoat to protect those children. Huh. On the other hand, him being one of the most famous and respected men in the city, I doubt anyone would believe my story if I accused him of attacking the sentry in the tower. This is gonna be hard. Very hard. But those children are innocents in all this. And those ruthless savages are about to kill them in cold blood. I have no other choice. God damn it! I had the visions again! Not now. I have to do this. I've got to do this. Ah, my head! You've got to stop this, Michael. I can't stand it anymore. This has to end. I can't help it. It's that demon. You, you know I can't help it. Please, Michael. Please. Make it stop. Yes. Oh. A tiny cowardly demon. Digging its claws into your soul like a jagged piece of glass. Whispering in your ear that what you're doing is right. Because nobody has the authority to tell you otherwise. I remember it. I remember. I can smell it. Feel it. Touch it. No, please. dark and intimate specter that only you know that gains strength in this new world. That brutal sensation of acid running through your veins, corroding little by little, anything good and decent you might have left inside you, turning it into pain, rot, and emptiness. Good God, what have I done? What have I done? Why are you showing me this? Please, answer me. Who was I before the catastrophe? Before the world collapsed? Do I really want to know? God, I'm afraid. 
I'm afraid of myself. Oh, my head. Uh, what the hell's going on? Oh, God. My head feels like it's gonna explode. Michael, please. Help us. Help us. Please. Remember. Beechwood Oracle. Repent. It's design. Was it our fault? Did we do it? Yes. We did it. Enough. Uh, please. Enough. Please, Michael. Help us. Only you can do it. Remember. Beechwood Oracle. God, what are these images? And that woman's voice. It's the same one that woke me up in the trailer. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. I stop tormenting me. I hope Rod helps me find some answers. If not, I'll go mad. Absolutely mad. No. Please. These visions. Uh, my head. You won't get any of his things. I won't allow it. Do you hear me? Michael, is that you? Thank God we found you. It's me, Chris. Don't you recognize me? But there is a solution, Michael. All is not lost. There is still a possibility of salvation for us. For each and every one of us. You have to stop this, Michael. You have to quit. I can't do it. It's destroying us, don't you see? It's killing us! It's that <laughs> demon inside me! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! These visions are getting more intense all the time. The pain is unbearable. Who's Chris? Salvation is still possible, he said. Could that be true? And once again, that female voice has been haunting me since I woke up. Who is she? Why was she so distressed? What the hell happened to us? What is going to happen to us? This is gonna be hard. Very hard. I remember. I'll get my stuff. You have to let those boys go. They're innocent. You've got the wrong people. What are you insinuating, rat? You better have a good reason for saying something like that, or we'll splatter your brains all over the wall of shame and then use the kids for target practice. I know who the guilty party is. I know who committed the crime. And I know where he is. Hey, we've got to hear this. Start talking, rat. Okay. Here goes. I hope those pigs take the bait. Because if they find out the truth, I'm a dead man. The murderer was a deranged man I met in the city a few hours ago. He told me he was desperate. Tired of the humiliation and violence he had to face every day. He was determined to do something crazy. I didn't believe him at the time, but now I see that he wasn't kidding. After the attack, he committed suicide by jumping into the cesspit next to the camp road. You'll find him there. His face is unrecognizable from pinning the rocks and scraping against the rubble. But I'm sure you'll find the murder weapon next to his body. Hmm. We'll check out your story and see if it holds up. We're approaching what looks like a body. It looks like that worm was right. Over. Ugh, what a mess. What the hell happened to his face? Meh, who cares? We found the guilty party with the murder weapon. Let those kids go. And unlock the camp gate. Over. You can come in now, rat. brought the morphine for your husband, just as I promised. 
This woman in this house gave me the chills. Let's get this over with as soon as possible. So you've come for your money. Is that it, you rat? You offered it to me. I didn't ask for anything in return. No, you're right. Yeah, I guess you've earned it. That's what we agreed. I'm an honest woman. I think you have a very wrong impression of me. Take your money, Michael. All right, thank you and good luck. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other around the camp. Wait, Michael, is it money that you want? I have more money. I still have some savings. Those camp rats didn't manage to take it all. I'm sure we can figure something out. I don't understand. My husband is about to die. Without him, we'll be nobodies. Me and the kids. The soldiers don't even show us any respect anymore. A while ago, they broke in here to take them away with no explanation. And it didn't matter to them in the least whose children they were. But if you stay here, all that could change. I still have some contacts. I could arrange for you to become the new Camp Mole. You're not like the rest of those rats out there, Michael. You're one of us. We'd be important again. We'd keep our privileges. Or do you want to be just another beggar in this sewer? I can't lower myself to that. I'd do anything. Stay here with us, Michael. No. I don't doubt for a second that this woman will be capable of anything, like a cornered scorpion. I don't think that would be a good idea. It would be better for me to leave. Take good care of those boys. They're good kids. Yeah, get out of here, you disgusting rat. You're all alike. In this camp, all you rats are alike. I don't need you. I don't need any of you. You're just waiting to see us fall. But I won't give you the satisfaction, you disgusting rats. I'll do what I have to do, but you won't see me crawling around in the trash like you. A cornered scorpion, surrounded by flames that are closing in. I think it would be best not to speak to this woman ever again. She could be dangerous. Mr. Sleepyhead. Excuse me? What did you call me? You're Mr. Sleepyhead. I saw you sleeping in Colin's trailer. I'm so glad you're awake now. I wasn't asleep. I was sick for a long time in that trailer. No, you weren't sick. You were sleeping like a big brown bear, Sir Sleepyhead. Sometimes I used to watch you sleeping in Rod's house, and you would grunt in your sleep like a bear. A great big lazy bear, Mr. Sleepyhead. But I'm glad you're awake now. I like your voice. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. Mr. Sleepyhead? No, that's not my name. I'm Michael. No, you're just trying to fool me. You're Mr. Sleepyhead. My name is Rose. There's something odd about this girl's behavior. It's true that she's very young, but she talks like a little girl. Nice to meet you, Rose. So, do you know Rod and Colin, too? Of course. I go over to their house a lot. Well, when they let me out of the van, that is. Rod and his wife have been very nice to me. Sometimes they let me play with Colin. We're very good friends. Are you a friend of Rod's and Colin's too, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, I'm friends with them too. Do you want me to tell you a secret, Mr. Sleepyhead? Of course. I have your old clothes. The ones you were wearing when Rod and his wife found you. I have them in the van. They were going to throw them away, but they gave them to me to wrap my baby in. He'll be cold now that winter's coming. Your baby? You have a baby, Rose? Yes, I have a baby. But he's not with me right now. He got lost. Have you seen him? Do you know where he is? I have another secret to tell you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Back in the van, Rose. Now. Move your ass. Get in there. Another secret? Just a minute. Wait! Get in that van, Rose. It's a very important secret, Mr. Sleepyhead. Something about you. Something about before the Great Wave. But first I have to find my baby. Have you seen him? Come on, Rose, you heard me. You don't want to get us mad now, do you? 
I have to go. Goodbye, Mr. Sleepyhead. Poor girl. She's obviously mentally ill. She's just a little girl in a grown-up's body. And you? If you want to go in there with her, you gotta pay like everybody else. I brought money. Let me see Rose. Hey, this is a lot of dough, pal. So, is it enough? More than enough. This'll get you into Rose's van for the rest of the night. All you can eat. <laughs> Have a good time with our Minnie Mouse, but be careful with the merchandise. You know how it works. You break it, you buy it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. You came back. Hello, Rose. Are you here to save me? Have you brought me my baby? They won't let me leave here to look for him. He's all I have left in the world. I don't have anyone else. Will you help me? That's why you came back, isn't it? Or did you come back for the other thing? Do you want me to take off my clothes and lie down on the mattress? I'd like to talk to you, Rose. You told me you had a secret to tell me. I need to hear it. Yes, Mr. Sleepyhead. I know a secret about you. It's something very important, but I'm not going to tell you. Why not? Because you haven't brought me my baby. I asked you to help me and you haven't done it. I want to hold my baby again and rock him to sleep. Aren't we friends anymore, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, of course we're still friends. But Rose, please, I need to know what it is. What is the secret? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's a riddle. I have something of yours. From before the great wave, it's the key for you to lock and unlock your chest of dreams, you sleepy bear. But I won't give it to you unless I can hold my baby again. The key to my chest of dreams? I don't know what the devil she's talking about, but if it's something from before the great wave, no doubt it could help me recover my past. Rose, I don't have time for games. Give me whatever you have, please. No, no, you have to help me first. Please bring me my baby. I want to rock him to sleep again, like in the picture on the wall. Have you seen the picture of my baby and me? It was taken before the great wave. I have no one else. I need my baby. Bring him to me. Bring him to me! Bring him to me! Hey, pal! You can have a good time with our Minnie Mouse, but don't mess up the merchandise! Don't make us come in there. You know how it works. You break it, you buy it! All right, Rose, all right. Calm down. No, I don't want you to lie down. But tell me, Rose, why can't you leave here? It's because of them. They don't let me go any farther than that empty lot over there. They say I have to be ready in case a client comes. They only let me go see Rod and Colin in their trailer every once in a while. And why don't you run away? Those men are too scary, Mr. Sleepyhead. They yell at me and hit me if I don't do what they say. Sometimes they lock me in here in the dark for hours. And I'm afraid the soldiers will come back. They say they'll call them. And if I don't behave, they'll hurt me again. I'm so afraid of the dark. Aren't you? Colin is afraid of the dark, too. Before he got sick, he told me. And now they won't let me see him anymore. I like the light better. Do you like the lights in my room, Mr. Sleepyhead? Yes, they're very pretty, Rose. It's like it's Christmas every day, isn't it? But the one who scares me most is the hunter. He's always ordering everyone around with a voice like an angry lion. He even gives orders to those men outside. He's like a horrible big dog about to bite you. I get the shivers every time he comes to visit me. But I like your voice very much, Mr. Sleepyhead. You sound like a knight in a fairy tale. And I am your princess. You said you don't have anyone. Where is your family? I don't know, Mr. Sleepyhead. The last time I saw them was when that great wave came. They said they were leaving, but that they'd come back to find me. And then they left me alone with my baby. They told me they'd only come back if I took good care of him. If I held him and rocked him to sleep, like in the picture on the wall. 
Did you see my baby and me in the picture, Mr. Sleepyhead? But someone took him while I was asleep. You see, I had this dream while those soldiers were hurting me. Do you like to dream, Mr. Sleepyhead? It depends on the dream, Louise. I dream about my baby a lot, sleeping in his little cradle. And I also dream about my room in the house I used to live in before the Great Wave. The sun came in through the window every morning and lit up everything. Sometimes it looked like the walls were going to catch fire. This room is darker. I don't like the dark. That's when they come and hurt me. And sometimes they lock me here in the dark to punish me if I don't do what they say. Have you brought me my baby, Mr. Sleepyhead? That poor girl is more disturbed than I thought. It looks like her mind hasn't been able to deal with all the pain of these last few months. Someone needs to get her out of here. No, Rose. I'm sorry. I haven't brought you your baby. Goodbye, Rose. I should be going now. No, don't go. Please, will you help me, Mr. Sleepyhead? Will you bring me my baby? And will you bring me a cradle like this one in the picture? Be my knight in shining armor. Bring me what I ask and I'll give you the answer. The key to unlock your chest of dreams. I'll try, Rose. I promise. It's a page torn out of a very old magazine. In her delirium, poor Rose thinks it's a photograph of her and her baby taken before the Great Wave. Huh? Leaving us so soon? <laughs> hey, you're quick, pal. So, how'd our little mouse do? I don't have anything else to discuss with you two. Okay, come back anytime you like. You paid for her. The door to the van is open to you all night long. Michael, thank God you've come back. Colin is worse. His trances are getting longer and deeper. My wife and I are afraid the end is near. Please tell me that you've brought the medicine to cure his disease. This is going to be very hard. But this man deserves to know the truth. I owe him that. I'm sorry, Rod. You have to see this. It's an army report. It says that the cure we were talking about doesn't exist. That it never existed. No. But there has to be a cure. There has to be hope for us. The vultures are starting to gather around our trailer, waiting for the end so they can take my son's belongings. Colin himself can see them from the window of his room. Calm down, Rod. I... Don't tell me to calm down. You've brought ruin to this house. You've come to sentence Colin to death. But that drug exists. It has to exist. Listen to me, Rod. I've done everything in my power to find the drug, but there is no such thing. Try to understand. There's no cure for the dissolved. The dissolved? I warned you, Michael. I warned you not to use that word in this house. Get out of here. Get out of our lives forever. Wait, Rod. I'm sorry, but you promised to help me. You promised to help me get my identity back. Help you? You've ruined our lives. You've condemned our little boy to death. Get out of here. Get out of here at once! Michael? Michael, I have to talk to you. I have a message. I have a message from her. My God, it's Colin. A message from her? Michael! Michael, please! She told me to talk to you. Where do you think you're going? Don't you dare go into that room. You're not welcome in this house anymore. But the boy, he called out to me by name. Colin's delirious. He doesn't even know who you are. 
Get away from my family immediately! Michael! Michael! I have a message from her! It's very important! Damn you! Don't go near that door! Get out of this house! Listen, Michael. We have a gun in that room with two bullets in it. Don't make me waste one of them on you. It's all right, Rod. Calm down. I'm leaving. And as for you, vultures, drawn by the scent of death, I won't let you take anything. You hear me? Not a single thing! When this is over, when he's gone, I'll make sure there's nothing left for you. You won't get anything! You won't get anything. Let's see what's in here. There's nothing coming out of the hole. Whatever's in this drum must be solid. Let's see what's in here. There's nothing coming out of the hole, though it weighs a ton. Whatever it is in this drum must be solid. Okay, so we'll make a hole in one of these drums. Blah! This must be the poisonous concoction they serve as a beverage in the bar. The drum is already empty enough. I think I can now get rid of this old hand drill. I doubt I'll be using it again. With its contents spilled all over the ground, the punctured drum doesn't seem so heavy anymore. This is the only way I can think of to draw those thugs out of their den. What the hell is going on now? Uh, another power failure. Go figure, nothing works in this damn camp. This damn sewer is gonna be the end of us. Everything's okay, calm down and shut your mouth. You, light some candles, get us some light in here. And you, come with me and take a look. It would be better if they didn't see me around here. Hey, look, the main cable is broken. How could that have happened? I don't know, maybe the wind or a bird. Bunch of idiots. The cable's cut. This was sabotage. Yep. And here are the tools he used to do it. Gloves and a pair of bolt cutters. Damn it. Let me kiss that stuff goodbye. Sabotage? Someone sabotaged us? Who would dare? I haven't the faintest idea. What happened, Hank? Hey, Mike. Nothing in particular. It's nice to see you around here, dude. Some idiotic camp electrician wanted to practice on our place. That's all. We'll give him a fitting reward when we find him. You know, fair's fair. So, tell me, what brings you to these parts? I wanted to talk business with you. Business? Of course, Mike. You know, in these hard times, we all have to help each other. I'm sure we'll be able to make a deal. Come inside and sit down with me. And you, fix this. All right, dude. You told me you wanted to talk business. So, here we are. Shoot. The last time I was here, you told me that you could get anything. I need some batteries. Of course, Mike. You know that I like you. I know one of our kind when I see one. I want to help you. I really do. But you know, in today's world, everything has a price. Things have gotten very ugly. How much is it going to cost me? Save your cash for those poor devils out there. I can see the future, dude. I can smell it and touch it. 
and that stupid paper will be worthless in a very, very short time. So what is it you want in exchange? The only liquid asset still worth anything in this new world, Mike. Fuel. Bring me gasoline, oil, kerosene. Anything that can make a motor or generator run, dude. These are dark days, and people need light. We want to bring it to them. You bring me the fuel, and the batteries are yours. It's obvious that I don't have anything like that on me. Then I'm sorry to have to tell you this, dude. No fuel, no deal. But you're a smart guy. I'm sure you'll figure out some way to make me happy. I should be going now. But first, I was able to talk to Rose and those two bastards who are exploiting her. Your business stinks to high heaven, Hank. Watch your mouth in my house, you damn prig. Because you're insulting me in front of my people. And this is not the first time. That poor girl is disturbed. She is the mind of a child. What you guys are doing isn't right. Do you want to talk about justice, dude? About that objective, impartial, blind lady with the scales? It's funny that you're the one bringing up that blindfolded whore. And wasn't it you who paid handsomely for some time alone with that little mouse? So, did you have a good time with her, Mike? And tell me, what are those blood stains on your shirt? I suppose my informants are mistaken, and that blood is unrelated to the disappearance of a certain preacher in this city. Michael, did you treat him justly? Now, who the hell do you think you are handing out lessons in morality to anyone, dude? But... How do you know? Oh, wait, there's an explanation for all that. Of course, there's an explanation. And it's very simple. You gotta do what you gotta do. But don't you worry, Mike. I see everything. But your secrets are safe with me. I like you, dude, because deep down, you and I are much more alike than you think. Our true nature is coming out in all its glory in this new world. You just need the courage to act on it. You're wrong. I'm not like you. I hope for your sake that you're the one who's wrong, dude. You're a predator. I can tell. Don't make the mistake of turning into a lamb. Because you already know how that could turn out. And when it comes to Rose, let me tell you that she has every right in the world to defend herself. That's the magnificence of this new world. It's given us absolute freedom to assume our true roles. Rose, just like the rest of us, has to decide if she's a lion or a lamb. Ain't it grand, dude? It's only now that we're truly free to choose. But don't get me wrong. The right to defend herself is hers, and hers alone. So be careful with the heroic gestures, Mike. You touch a single hair on the head of any of my men to defend that little mouse, and I'll rip your skin off one strip at a time. They're friends of mine. Got it? Yes. You've made yourself perfectly clear. You won't have to tell me again. I should be going now. Okay, Mike. Whatever you say. Remember, get me fuel, and you'll have your batteries. Hey, Hank. What if I told you I know where you can get more fuel than you've ever dreamed of? Don't call me that again, dude. Like I told you, that man died in the Great Wave. But you have aroused my curiosity. So, where is this place? Information like that is well worth the batteries you need. A few hours ago, I found a way to get into the medical center you told me about on the outskirts of the city. It's much bigger than it looks like from the outside. And it uses enormous generators to power its electrical system. They're storing hundreds of barrels of fuel in a huge depot, which is hidden behind a fence that goes all the way around the compound. It's invisible from the outside. Yeah, and I suppose you brought those hundreds of barrels to the camp to bargain with me. No, but I do have the key that will let you and your men get them out of there without raising suspicion. It's a vehicle pass for entering the compound, stamped by the army. That's a very interesting story, dude. I'll have to do some checking, but it sounds promising. Now, if what you're saying is true, you're going to make one weary old bear very happy. But if you're lying, I'll find you wherever you try to hide, and I'll maul you with my paws right on the spot. So you'll give me the batteries in exchange for the ID? Deal. The ID is now mine. 
Here are the batteries you asked for. Okay, let's see if this device still works. <laughs> it works, but what do we have here? It's a list with hundreds of names, places and addresses, and a map of the city. Hey Mike, wait, before you go. I've been thinking about it, and now it's my turn to propose a deal to you. A deal? Yeah, listen, me and my boys don't like leaving the camp any more than we have to. We're a bit too well known and sought after by the pigs out there, if you get my drift. I see. All that talk about the medical center, the fuel and the ID got me curious. I need to get the lay of the land to check out some things and work out a plan. But I can't expose myself. It would look very suspicious if I were to be seen poking around out there. Of course. And what do you need from me? Bring us enough information about that depot for us to make a plan. I'm talking diagrams, coordinates, maps, or better yet, a photo. Bring back what I'm asking for, and I'll give you whatever you want in return. What is it you need, dude? Oh, I don't need much. Just for someone to recover the old world and bring it back. I'm afraid you're asking too much, Mike. For now, the laws of physics are the only thing from the past that me and my men have managed to subvert. In any case, I wouldn't try to prevent that great wave, even if I knew how to do it. Things are fine just the way they are. You know how it is. God, or the devil, has been very good to me. Do you know the trailer where Rod Atkinson and his wife live? Yes, of course. I know Rod, that hypocritical busybody. He still thinks that with his old world morality, he can save everyone in the camp. He's a real pain in the ass, dude. They have a young son, Colin. I can't tell you why, but I need to be alone with the kid, just for a few minutes. You have to make a commotion outside to keep Rod and his wife distracted long enough. Keep them busy for a few minutes. Find any excuse, but I need time alone with that boy. You never cease to amaze me, Mike. I don't know what you've got in mind, but it's none of my business. Bring me the information I asked you for. Bring me that photo of the fuel depot of the hospital. And I promise you'll have all the time you need to do whatever it is you want to do with that boy. And my complete discretion, of course. I don't know what idea is percolating in the hunter's sick mind right now, but I have to play along to avoid having to explain anything. I gotta make sure he doesn't find out about the boy's illness. Deal. But nobody gets hurt, okay? Bring me that photograph of the fuel depot at the hospital, and we'll do whatever's strictly necessary. <laughs> Okay, let's enter the address shown on the card from Beechwood Oracle, 24 Mametswood Street. The map shows me a place near downtown. Let's go have a look. I don't have a good feeling about the deep red of the cover. I'm not going to take one. The sign says, Emergency Exit, Beechwood Oracle Bookstore. Do not block. Well, it seems that in spite of the warning, this door is indeed blocked. 
And now, I no longer have the slightest doubt as to the name of the establishment. Doesn't look like it's going to be complicated to open his door with a crowbar. Done. Hey, wait a minute. Who the hell's over there? I don't see anything. Look at that building. I saw something moving in that shadow on that wall. I think you're a little paranoid tonight. I told you to relax. Come on, take a deep breath. Shut up! I bet it was one of those cats. All this is because of those pestilent beasts that have been bothering us since we got here. I couldn't stand them. I better not let those two psychopaths down here see me. I should be very careful. Lights are broken and burnt out. I'm not going to waste time on this. Okay, I'll use the can to avoid touching those disgusting fish with my hands. It's useless. I should just accept the idea that these fish won't ever swim in freedom again. You are, you mangy beasts! So you dared to come out, did you? Now I've got you! Ow! Goddamn revolting cats! Soon or later I'll get each and every last one of you! I promise you! Don't get mad! Your technique's improving! You almost got one this time! Shut up! Now I get it. What the shit? Why does nothing work right in this filthy city? Looks like a voltage surge. Suppose you think the cats are to blame. Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. I'm not letting those flea-bitten beasts out of my sight. No chance, mate. Hey, wait a minute. I... I 
I've seen this place before. I've been here. I recognize this rooftop. Those trees. The park. The statue. Tomorrow comes today. <laughs> of course. The photo from the poster. It was shot from someplace in this very building. But, but what's the meaning of all this? And could it be that the voice wasn't actually trying to lead me to that burned out bookstore down there? But rather to this building? To this place? There's a piece of paper stuck to the door, and it looks like it has a handwritten message on it. Let's see what it says here. Who could Sarah be? And this Chris, could he have something to do with the person I saw in my vision? There's a metal plaque on the wall next to the door. Michael Argent, photographer. I can't believe it. This is the apartment of a man named Michael, an apartment located above the Beachwood Oracle bookstore. And in the building where the photograph on the poster was taken. Can all this really be a coincidence? It's hard to believe, but... Is it possible that the voice in my head has been guiding me to my own front door? Isn't it time for you to go back to your nest, rat? That ignorant bastard is starting to get on my nerves. Yes. I do have to be going. By the way, how did the chase go? Were those cats too quick for you? You'd better go. It's not in your best interest to get my partner any more agitated. Not tonight. You shut your mouth, you rat, or I'll shut it for you. I won't warn you again. Those beasts are possessed, and I'm going to exterminate them one by one with my bare hands if I have to. I'm sure that would make you the pride of the force. Just one more thing. Try to stay away from the trash cans next time. I've warned you, you filthy rat! You've worn out my patience! Ow. This'll teach you to treat me with a little more respect! I'm going to wipe that stupid grin off your face! Ouch! This is the only language you shitheads from the refugee camp understand! So, you're going to treat me with respect now, aren't you? Come on, leave him alone. You'll kill him. He is a mole after all, and it's in our interest to keep him alive. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, you're safe for now, but I have a very good memory for faces. Another day, I'll finish what we started, rat. I swear it. I don't think doing this would serve any purpose. These stains mark the spot where that bloated psychopath knocked me down with his flashlight. Now I can say I've made my mark in this new world. Wait a minute. And on that blood, there, there's something white. <laughs> it's a fragment of one of my teeth. Okay, I'll use the bucket for what it was designed for, to be filled with water. Before I go down, I'll leave the heavy stuff here, in case the rope doesn't support my weight. I'll get my stuff.
here goes. Maybe we can still salvage something from the fire. Now that the fire is out, I don't intend to carry this rusty bucket around anymore. I'll get rid of it. Let's see. I'll use the rusty nails to attach these two objects together. Let's see. I'll use the electrical tape to join these two objects. The bad news is that I just used up all the electrical tape. The great wave may be making me lose my mind, but I'm still not crazy enough to want to put a piece of burnt plastic in a crib. Thank you, Mr. Sleepyhead. This cradle is just like the one in the picture. Now I can rock my baby to sleep and sing to him. But now I need you to find the baby. I won't tell you your secret if you don't bring me my baby. Bring me my baby boy, Mr. Sleepyhead. Okay, don't worry, Rose. I'll do it. Hmm, I'm not proud of what I'm about to do. But I need to find out that secret Rose is keeping from me. And if she wants her baby, I'll give her back her baby. I've brought you your baby, Rose. Did you bring me my baby? Did you bring him? Thank you so much, Mr. Sleepyhead. You kept your word. You brought me my baby. Now I need you to tell me that secret you promised to reveal if I brought what you asked. Yes, our secret. I have something that belongs to you, Mr. Sleepyhead. It's the key that opens your chest of dreams. And now, it's yours again. But it's a real key. Where did you get it? I found it in your jacket after Rod and his wife gave me your clothes. When I got to my room, the key fell on the floor and made a clinking sound. I had just seen you sleeping in their trailer, like a big bear. And then I figured it out. It was the key to the chest where you were keeping your dreams. Because you like to dream, don't you? Of course you do. That's why your name is Mr. Sleepyhead. The key that opens my chest of dreams. Thank you very much for your help, Rose. Take good care of your son. I should be going now. No, please. Don't go. Don't leave me here. Now that I've found my baby, I have to get away from here. Far away. I have to get away from the haunted castle. If you leave, more men will come and hurt me, and they'll lock me up in the dark again. And I can't stand the dark. That's when those soldiers come back and take me with them. And now they'll want to hurt my baby, too. The hunter was clear. I mustn't get mixed up in his affairs, or there'll be hell to pay. I'm sorry, Rose. I can't do anything. Mr. Sleepyhead, I can't stand it anymore. Don't let them touch me again. Please help me. You have to get me out of here. Like the knight in the stories. You're my knight, and I'm your princess. Good God, this is unbearable. Victims and executioners, it sums things up. And what was I? What was my role before the Great Wave? Damn it, I can't just leave that poor girl to her fate. I have to do something to save her, even if I don't know what that is yet. I'll help you, Rose. I'll help you get out of here. Thank you, Mr. Sleepyhead. Do you promise? Will you be my knight in shining armor? Yes. <laughs> Let's see if my intuition is correct. Yes, the key that opens my chest of dreams is 
a key that in fact belongs to Michael Argent, photographer. The key to my own apartment. Solstice Times, that's the name of this newspaper. Now I understand. This file cabinet holds copies of newspapers and magazines my photos appeared in. It seems like as a photographer, I was very fond of my own work. Sandy Ridge Sentinel, the title of this publication appears in the front page. Today Progress, one of the many newspapers stored in the filing cabinet. The New Truth. That's the name of this newspaper. First, I'll put the newspaper I took back in its place. As much as I might like my old photos, I have no intention of carrying around any more paper than necessary. It can't be. It's me. This photo. I remember it. I remember this photograph. Please, Michael, help us. Only you can do it. And this woman is... She's Emily. She's my wife. Now I remember her. The person who's been communicating with me all this time. Emily. I love you, Michael. And I now pronounce you... Don't ever leave me. I won't. I have something to tell you, Michael. Are you... Are you really... Oh, yes! Things are not going well between us, Michael. You know that. It's only a rough patch. You'll see. It's all your fault! You have to get on top of this, Michael. It's destroying both of us. I'm afraid of you. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Everything will be different. Remember that vacation we took to the beach when we were getting to know each other? Everything will go back to the way it was. Promise me. I promise. Oh, Emily, what does all this mean? Where are you? How can I find you? What are these messages you keep repeating in my head? I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind. That, that's the only logical explanation for this. Oh, Emily. My poor Emily. Where are you? How can I find you? Of course. The letters T and T on the letterhead. Good God, Michael, is that you? There's no question about it. That's the person I saw in my vision. The person mentioned in the note I found in my house. What was his name? Hello, Chris. Come in quickly. It's dangerous to be out on the streets at this hour. Michael, I'm so glad to see you again. After all that time without hearing from you, Sarah and I feared the worst. But tell me, why didn't you come sooner? Where have you been all this time? From his enthusiastic welcome, it looks like this man and I were good friends in the past. Before the entire world collapsed. But can I trust him? I don't know. Do I have any other choice? It's a long story, Chris. Very long. I'm all ears, old friend. And while I tell him everything I can remember, the few things in my memory since waking up in Rod's trailer, I see a mixture of tenderness and compassion on his face, something I haven't seen in anyone else since waking up in this hellhole. I haven't the slightest doubt. I can trust this man. I'm sorry for everything that happened, Michael. Sarah and I have been trying to get in touch with you for a long time. But the great wave made it impossible to find you. Now I know why. As a matter of fact, she went out to take that note to your house. I haven't seen her since. Tell me, did you find Sarah? Did she tell you she was coming here? Sarah? I'm sorry, but I don't... I just found this handwritten note in the door. That's all. 
Of course, forgive me. You already told me that you were blanked. You don't remember her. Sarah is my wife. Emily and she were close friends. In fact, they ran the Beechwood Oracle bookstore together, right below your apartment. That's how you started working with us at the New Truth. And the two of you, Emily and you, became like family to us. I want you to know that what happened to Emily affected us deeply, Michael. Sarah was devastated. We could hardly bring ourselves to speak to you at the time. I'm so sorry for what happened to her. What the hell are you talking about? Good God. Don't tell me you don't remember that either. Emily died, Michael. But that's impossible. I'm sorry to be the one to make you relive that hell. You yourself told Sarah and me on the phone a little while before you returned home. It happened while the two of you were in Japan, scarcely a few days before the great wave hit. At the paper, we sent you on an assignment to do a photo essay on those strange lights that had been sighted in the sky over Tokyo. So you got all your photography equipment together and set off right away. Emily went with you. You two decided to use the trip as a chance to work on your marriage, which had been in trouble for a long time. You were in bad shape, Michael. Your financial problems, her miscarriages, your violent, self-destructive nature. Emily couldn't take it anymore. You were putting her through too much back then. Things are not going well between us, Michael. You know it's that. It's only a rough patch. You'll see. It's all your fault. You have to get on top of this, Michael. It's destroying both of us. I'm afraid of you. I can't help it. It's that demon. And you know I can't help it. From what you told us, things were getting better. After so many years, both of you were starting to rediscover each other. Everything will be different. Remember that vacation we took to the beach when we were getting to know each other? Everything will go back to the way it was. Promise me. I promise. Until one night in your hotel, Emily started to feel sick. It all happened very fast. She was having fainting spells, vomiting, running a fever. You took her to the nearest hospital where she was admitted immediately. Emily, what's happening? Emily, Emily. And a few hours later, they told you she was dead. They wouldn't even let you see her body. They wouldn't let you see her. The Japanese authorities hustled you off on the next plane out. It was all very strange and disconcerting. And the very night you arrived, the great wave hit. Oh, Emily. Now I remember it. I remember everything. I remember her pale, haggard face when she took my hand. Don't worry. It's nothing. Everything will be all right, she was saying, while they were wheeling her deep into the hospital. And she waved goodbye to me, forcing a smile to cover her fear. And then I saw it. I swear I could see how time was stopping, little by little, in her eyes. Emily can't be dead. I, she talks to me. I've been hearing her voice for some time now. You must think I've lost my mind. From the little we were able to talk to you before you got back, we could see that her death hit you terribly hard, Michael. You felt extremely guilty for the way you treated her those last few years. You said you would never be able to forgive yourself. It's possible that the pain warped your mind, but it's also possible that what is happening to you is real. If Emily died before the Great Wave, how can what's happening to me be real? Let me tell you something. In spite of the catastrophe, at the new truth, we've never stopped working. For Sarah and for me, this newspaper is our life. And since the great wave, our contacts and confidential sources haven't stopped bringing us the most incredible and chilling information you could imagine. Thousands, no, millions of unexplained phenomena are taking place simultaneously all over the world, Michael. We're living through the strangest and most confusing times in our history. And any hypothesis, no matter how crazy, must be taken into consideration. Even what you just told me. There's no question that something extraordinary is happening all over the world because of the great wave, the emergence of the dissolved, and our gradual approach to the dead synchronicity point. Yes, the great wave. 
People have been telling me about it since the moment I woke up. Everyone talks about it, but no one really knows what it is. Did you know that the catastrophe didn't just strike here, but all over the world? They keep us isolated and misinformed, but that's the truth. The Great Wave didn't just destroy this city, it affected the entire planet. And the most surprising thing is that it all happened simultaneously, at the exact same moment everywhere on Earth. Isn't that amazing? There's never been an official account of the catastrophe. They don't want to tell us. But at the new truth, we know a lot of things they don't want us to know. They? Who are they? The elite, the army, the shadow government. Whoever is in control at any particular moment. They're determined to maintain the power structures of the old world by any means. The irony is, for the moment, any notion of order or control is absurd. The rules of the game have changed completely, and the entire world is slipping through their fingers. They're disoriented and frightened, and they'll do anything to prop up the old system. That's what makes them so dangerous. But information weakens them, makes them vulnerable. And that's why we have to keep investigating, Michael. It's our duty to uncover the truth. The dissolved, that horrible disease. Yes. The fate of those poor devils, that's the cruelest and saddest part of this story. From reliable sources, we've been able to find out that while it is true the Great Wave multiplied the number of dissolved drastically, a few early cases of dissolution were actually detected hours, even days before the catastrophe. What? There were cases of the dissolved before the Great Wave? Yes, Michael. Just a handful of victims scattered across the globe. But the timing is significant. What's more, people have told us shocking stories about those victims. I could tell you one. Colin, the only child of the family that took care of me in the refugee camp, is a dissolved. Just a few hours ago, in a deep trance, he shouted out my name, insisting that he needed to talk to me. He kept saying that he wanted to give me a message, a message from Emily. Good God, Michael. And what was that message? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to talk to him, but I will. His condition is very serious. And I have to hurry. If only we had more information about the disease. What it is, where it came from. If only we knew a little bit more about those strange underground highways they talk about so much during their trances. We need more information. At the New Truth, all we have are a few eyewitness reports here and there. And a handful of tests for detecting the disease that we were able to steal from one of the cleanup brigades. And that's not very much when you're trying to put together a puzzle as obscure and complicated as this one. Dead synchronicity. What's that? It's very difficult to explain, Michael. We're still so short of information. But I will tell you one thing. Time is running out. The Great Wave triggered a landslide of death and destruction that's accelerating by the day. And the end will be absolutely devastating. Look around you, Chris. It's impossible for the situation to get worse. If the theory about the approach of the dead synchronicity point is true, the future that awaits us will make everything we've seen up to now seem like a walk in the park, Michael. The arrival of the dead synchronicity point will mean the end of the world as we know it. The end of the laws of nature, the laws of physics, the very meaning of existence. And with them, of course, the end of the human species on the face of the Earth. Our inability to adapt will wipe us out in a matter of minutes. And indeed, in some cases, it's already happening. But the good news is that if this hypothesis is correct, the very nature of this anomaly could also allow us to reverse the situation. Reverse the situation? You mean avoid the future you're talking about? Avoid the consequences of the Great Wave? Is that possible? Of course it is. How can I explain it to you? No, not yet. It would be too complex for you to understand, and I don't want to create any false hope. Uh, I can't tell you anything more for the time being. We need more information, more sources, and we need them urgently. Time is running out, in every sense of the word. I need answers too, Chris. Where can I find the information you need? How can I help you? A few days ago, one of our confidential sources in the army contacted the New Truth. He told us he had a bombshell in his hands, 
an official report of the results of all the investigations conducted to date on the Great Wave, the Dissolved, and the Dead Synchronicity Point. It's a real gold mine, Michael. The answer to our prayers. And where is that report now? The same day she left the note at your house, Sarah was supposed to meet our source at the same place we always meet people who cooperate with the new truth, which had been the safest place in the city up to that point, the sewers. But she never came back, Michael. I was hoping she'd found you. Or perhaps some problem had come up in the sewers, and she'd taken refuge in your apartment. Don't worry, Chris. Sarah will be fine. Yes, I know. Sarah is a strong woman and very resourceful. I know she can take care of herself. If you want to help us, Michael, get us that report. I'm trapped in this basement in this wheelchair, but I know that you'll be able to get it for me. It's vitally important that we get it. That's where we'll find the answers to all our questions, even answers about Emily and her messages. Follow the trail of Sarah and our source. Go down into the sewers and find some clue that can lead us to them. But be very careful down there. It's dangerous. Dangerous? You just told me the sewers were the safest place in the city. Indeed, they were. That's why they became the perfect hiding place for the dissolved and their families. For some time now, the army has been reinforcing its dragnets for catching the dissolved hiding in the sewers. If they find you in one of those tunnels, they'll shoot first and ask questions later. I'll be fine. Take this. You'll need something to guide you. The city sewer system is a veritable labyrinth. I've marked the exact spot where the meeting was supposed to take place. It's a huge subterranean gallery where several pipes converge. Michael, please, bring me that report. And for the love of God, bring Sarah back to me safe and sound. I'll do it. Here goes. I'll use the map Chris gave me as a guide. These tunnels are a real labyrinth. This is the place marked on the map, the place where Sarah and her confidential source were found. There's a very familiar sound coming from the depths of the tunnel behind this grate. It's a subway train. I don't get it. If they boarded up the subway stops and shut down the subway service, what the devil are those trains carrying? And where are they going? so tangled up in here. My God! Sarah! A bullet's torn off her jaw. But her face is still recognizable. Poor Chris. How am I gonna break this to him? Hello, Chris. Michael, you're back already? Tell me, did you find Sarah? Did you bring the report she went out to get? I brought the report. Here it is. Oh, that's great news. I knew you could do it. Ah, oh, damn it. 
I should have guessed. I was expecting a paper dossier, not an electronic document. We have a serious problem, Michael. Problem? What's wrong? We're not in the old world anymore. And access to electricity is a privilege very few people have nowadays. Now, the good news is that I was able to save my old laptop from the great wave. The bad news is that we don't have anywhere to plug it in. What can we do? If we want to find out the secrets in this report, we need electricity. Bring me a generator with enough fuel, and we'll find all the answers we need, Michael. But tell me, please, did you find Sarah? Why didn't she come back with you? What happened? I'm sorry, Chris. Sarah's dead. God. But... what? It looks like she and your confidential source were ambushed and shot by soldiers in the sewers. I found Sarah's body in one of the graded tunnels, near the refugee camp. I took the report out of her hands, but I had to leave her there. Oh, my poor Sarah. She... she didn't deserve that. Please, Michael, don't leave her body to rot in the sewers. I beg of you, do it for me. For Sarah. For Emily. I'll do what I can, Chris. I promise you. Now, get me that electric generator. Time is running out. Looks like there's also film burns and cameras here. Perfect. Now I can load the camera. Ah, oh, the tab that closes the film compartment is broken. I can't use it like this. I need something to hold it in place, or else the film will keep falling out. I can't believe it. The tooth fragment fits perfectly into the slot for the broken tab. Now I can close the film compartment. Before leaving his house, I shoot a furtive glance at Chris. He's gazing at Sarah's photo in silence, completely lost in thought. Maybe I should have lied about what happened to her. I told him that she got away, leaving the report behind, that she's safe and sound, and just waiting for the right moment to come back. The truth is a poisonous inheritance from the old world. What good does it do to know it if it snatches away your last hope? too morbid to photograph that. Let's see what this room actually is with a little light. Flip the switch for the only circuit that's not blown. Hmm. I 
think I hear the buzz of electricity coming from the surface. Let's take a look. Perfect. I've brought what we agreed. Here's a photograph of the fuel depot. Fantastic, Mike. Let's see what you've got there. This is incredible. Those pigs have been storing thousands of gallons of fuel, and all within our reach. With your ID, all we have to do is go into the compound, say hello, boys, and bring it all back here. You've just made me very, very happy, dude. I knew I wasn't wrong about you. Now you have to hold up your end of the bargain. Yes, of course I will, Mike. You know I'm a man of my word. Besides, these are hard times, and we have to help one another, dude. I'll get Rod and his wife out of their trailer, so you can have a little time alone with the boy. You have my word, and my complete discretion. But remember that you promised that we'd do it my way, quietly and with no violence. I don't want anybody getting hurt. I just need your men to distract his parents on some pretext for long enough for me to slip in there, okay? Of course, Mike. You have my word that we'll only do what's necessary. Only what's strictly necessary. Give me a few minutes and then go to the trailer. Everything will be fine when you get there. Okay, but before I go, can I ask you for something else? Today you've been the bearer of the best possible news, dude. So shoot, I'll see what I can do. I need an electric generator urgently. Hey, hey, dude, calm down. I think you misinterpreted my offer. Since the great wave, a generator has become worth more than the lives of a hundred people in this camp. Don't think I couldn't get you one, but the price will be so high that I can't imagine how you'd be able to pay me. I'm sorry, Mike. But I just gave you access to thousands of gallons of fuel. But those barrels aren't walking out of that place on their own. My men and I are going to have to risk our hides by going into the lion's den. I'm sorry, but the matter is closed. Some soldiers murdered a friend of mine in the sewers. I need you to take care of her body. Well, well, well. Murdered in the sewers. And what the hell was your friend doing there? Wait, don't answer. I've heard about that custom among some relatives of the sick. It means she was hiding a dissolved in the sewers. Or am I mistaken? Yes. You're absolutely, totally, and completely wrong. I'm not going to tell you what she was doing there. About her commitment to learning the truth to changing things in the shithole left behind by the great wave, where you move around like a fish in water. You'd be incapable of understanding it. You couldn't even imagine making a sacrifice like that. Even I have a hard time imagining it. It's none of your business. Listen, Mike, you know what I think of those disease carriers and of the people who hide them. For everyone's sake, they all belong in the hands of the cleanup brigades. But you know what? Your intentions are good, giving a friend a decent burial. You're loyal to your friends, and I like that. Above all, you've got to be faithful. Loyalty is everything in this new world. So, consider it done. I'll take care of it, dude. Her body is in the sewer tunnel that comes out by the entrance to the camp. Your friend will have a decent resting place. I give you my word. You should be going now. I've got to get the trailer sorted out. Give me a few minutes, and then you can go there. Okay? Adios, dude. Wait a minute. What's that noise? Why is everyone fleeing? What's going on? The cleanup brigades are coming. And they're heading for Rod's trailer. God 
Damn it! The hunters turned them in! That animal turned Colin and his family in! No! He's not sick! It's a mistake! Don't take him away! It's all a misunderstanding! It's just a question of minutes before those bastards break into the trailer and take the boy! Okay, I've got to act fast. The noise the ambulance makes will cover the sound of the glass breaking. Michael? Michael, is that you? Yes, Colin. It's me. But how do you know my name? Emily told me a lot about you. That's how I know you. She gave me a message. She said it was very important that I give it to you. What's all that noise outside, Michael? Where are my parents? It's, it's nothing, Colin. Your parents will be back very soon. Don't worry. But it's impossible for you to have spoken to Emily. She, she's no longer with us. Yes, yes she is. Emily is always with me. When I go down the underground highways, she's there waiting for me. Emily gave me a message, Michael. She told me it was something very, very important. Tell me what happens on those underground highways, Colin. The highways are very dark, and I don't want to go down there. They're too scary. There's no light, and they're full of ghosts. There are only shadows and voices down there. Everyone seems very sad and angry, and they tell me things I don't want to know, things I don't even understand. At first, I hid the whole time, so they wouldn't find me. Or I wandered around by myself for hours in the dark, until I met Emily. Now I'm not so afraid of the underground highways, Michael, because she's always there. You say that Emily takes care of you? Uh, but how is that possible? She protects me. She keeps me from feeling scared, because I used to be really scared. I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't understand anything. But now with Emily by my side, everything is much better. She tells me that what's happening to me is normal, that I'm just sick, but that the sickness will go away soon, and that the pain will go away for good then, that she also got really scared when she got sick. Emily told you that she also got sick? Yes, she told me that she went through this before me, that a while back she got the same sickness I have. She told me that she felt very lonely too, and that the pain was unbearable. But that, it finally ended. And that's why I shouldn't worry. That the pain and the fear will go away. She's very kind to me, Michael. She's very kind to everybody, isn't she? Yes, Colin. Yes, she is. Emily contracted the same disease. No. It can't be. Emily, a dissolved? Is that why they didn't let me see your body? Is that the reason for all the secrecy surrounding your death? And what is this message you have to give me that's so important? She told me that she couldn't come back to be with us. That she will be trapped forever on the underground highways. And that the same thing will happen to me very soon. That's why she asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. She told me that you'd understand. We're connected. And it's very important for you to remember that. Connected? What does that mean, Colin? Emily told me there was a thread that no one can see that joins us to you. And that's why there's still a chance we can be saved. But that only you could do it while there's still time. She told me that if we're connected, there's still some hope for us all. Can you make everything go back to the way it was, Michael? I don't want to be stuck on the underground highways forever. Can you really make everything go back the way it was, Michael? We're connected? What does that mean? I don't understand anything. This is all crazy. Michael, help me. It hurts so much. Make it stop. Colin, what's happening? Make it stop. Please. Colin. Get out of our 
away and let us do our job. No, don't go in there. I beg of you. My son. My son. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Damn it. I can't breathe. If it's true that there's a way to change all this, I have to find it now. I don't think I can stand it any longer. I don't think anyone can. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Have you come to help us? I don't know whether who I was before the Great Wave entitles me to make any kind of moral judgments. But what I do know is that the Hunter and his men are a real cancer in this new world, which is the only thing that really counts right now. The girl has a right to defend herself, that bastard said. So someone should give her the chance to do that. It's only fair, right? I can't get you out of here, Rose. I'm sorry. You're the only one that can do it. Thank you. As she was picking up the revolver, she gave me a look of determination that I didn't know she had in her. Rose acted so quickly that I barely saw what happened through the crack in the door of her van. Her hand was steady, even when the second man begged for his life, sobbing and groveling on the floor. The bullet went right through his heart. Blood splattered all over her white dress. And then she let the revolver drop and sat down lost in her own world and she didn't do or say anything else holed up in her tiny delirious inner landscape there she had everything she could ever need safe at last from the new world which she will probably never return to Let's see. The coins fit perfectly in the heads of the screws. It'll be no trouble loosening them and taking the fabric with me. water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? What the hell? Another one of those repeating images. Of those damn time loops. No. Rose. No, don't do it. No. It's Rose. Killing her captors again. But there's something in this one that makes it different. It feels more real, and more intense than the other times. Damn it. I wasn't able to save it. I can only cover half the generator with this. Water turn the generator. Why would I want it? Damn it. 
damn it. That's what happens when you bring electrical devices in contact with water. The contents of the water tank made it completely useless. No. Rose. No, don't do it. No! First, I'll unplug the cables that connected to the trailer. Ugh, no. What the hell am I trying to do? I think it's time for me to get away from Rod in this trailer, for good. brought the generator you need, Chris. Great, Michael. I knew you could do it. Give me a few minutes to set up the computer and open the report. While Chris was getting everything ready, I decided to sit down in one of the armchairs in the office. I was exhausted. My mind had been trying to make sense of the last few hours of my life for what seemed like an eternity. The first hours following bitter birth in this new world but how could i judge the new world if i could barely remember the old one the only thing i was sure of was that we had lost something very valuable along the way the photograph of our life overnight had turned into a dark blurry sepia tinted image all of civilization had drowned under the great wave and the only thing left on the beach were its remains but no, I was fooling myself. I was already lost before the catastrophe. <laughs> to tell the truth, all the other victims of the Great Wave have been luckier than me. They still dreamed of returning to their lives. Mine had already been broken a long time ago. Did I really stand a chance of recovering something I'd already lost forever? What type of strength, what type of miracle could ever give me that second chance? Michael, wake up! What's happening? The report, Michael. It's the report. I was going over it while you were sleeping. It's incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. You're gonna think I've gone crazy, but I don't even know where to start. How about at the beginning? Okay. It's the dead synchronicity point. The entire universe is changing, and we're going to witness it. We're going to be witnesses and victims. Witnesses? Victims? But what the hell are you talking about? What is this dead synchronicity point? It's hard to explain. You're a photographer, so I'll try this analogy. Imagine a person's life chronicled in photographs. Up to now, and according to the rules that governed our universe, we were all subject to certain very specific temporal rules. Past, present, and future. That's all there was to it. So, the first thing we'd find would be a photo of the person as a newborn, then another on the person's sixth birthday, then another in college, and so on. Then we'd see photos of the person's wedding, children, old age, death, all in logical, linear, chronological order. Since our universe is conceived along a single line that starts in the past, makes a stopover in the present, and then projects into the future. 
Do you follow me? Yes, of course I follow you. Well, imagine now that this entire temporal architecture crumbles, falls apart, dissolves. Imagine that something or someone has altered the foundations of our universe, changing the rules of the game, forever annihilating our idea of time. The concepts of past, present, and future. I think you just lost me, Chris. Then let me continue with the metaphor of the photographs. Imagine now that a card dealer takes all these snapshots that sum up the life of this person, shuffles them, and places them in a stack in one spot on the card table. What would we have then? There would no longer be a chronological line, Michael. There would be no past, present, or future. Each of the individual events captured in these photographs, they would all be happening simultaneously, at the exact same point in time. And that point we would call... The dead synchronicity point. Exactly. Now our world is abandoning its old physical laws and getting closer to that dead synchronicity point where time no longer exists. And therefore, all the phenomena and events that happened or will happen in the universe will start to be stacked on top of other ones, like the photographs in the dealer's deck. sounds crazy. How credible do you think this report is? Completely, Michael. The dead synchronicity point is a fact, and the worst thing is that we're approaching it faster and faster. It'll only be a matter of days, at best maybe a few weeks, before the universe enters this new state. Time is ending, in every sense. And what does all this have to do with us? Come on, do you still not see it? This change in the architecture of the universe, this nullification of time, is the real origin of the Great Wave, the dissolved, and the emergence of the new world. So, the Great Wave was caused by this approach to the dead synchronicity point? Yes, Michael. The Great Wave was the first manifestation of our universe's approach to the dead synchronicity point. That's why the catastrophe struck at the same time all over the planet. It wasn't just a local occurrence. It had global dimensions. It was the first clear and obvious sign that something was going wrong. And it brought chaos and misery to the world, as you've been seeing yourself since you woke up. What the hell do the Dissolved have to do with all this? According to the report, the Dissolved are still a big mystery. There isn't much information about them or their disease. What we do know is that they are people who are especially sensitive to the dead synchronicity point, and that is what's so tragic about them. Especially sensitive? Of course. This transformation, this radical and overwhelming change in the basic structure of the universe is totally incompatible human life. We're condemned to die, Michael. Each and every one of us. That's terrible. How can you be so sure of that? If you think about it rationally, it's obvious. Our bodies are the product of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, of a gradual and precarious adaptation to the environment, the universe, and its physical laws. Reaching the dead synchronicity point, the annihilation of time, We'd need another hundred thousand years to adapt to such a drastic change. And what do you think will happen to the human race, to each and every one of us, when this process concludes? I'll tell you. Our primary metabolism will go into a state of shock. Our entire cell structure will be jolted so profoundly and so violently that what we now call our bodies will lose all coherence, leaving behind just a brown puddle as evidence of our existence. We will dissolve with those poor, sick people. Indeed. According to the report, the dissolved are simply pioneers, people who are ahead of their time, the vanguard of the human race in its final extinction. That's why some cases started cropping up so early, even before the Great Wave. Their illness was the harbinger of the enormous explosion that was to follow. It preceded it by hours, even days. And that's why the cases are multiplying exponentially as we get closer to the end. Do you understand? We'll all end up turning into dissolved. The last time we spoke, you told me that there could be a solution. 
a way to reverse all this madness. Yes, and that's the best part of the report. Theoretically, Michael, and paradoxical as it may sound, our progress toward the dead synchronicity point also brings the opportunity to change things, to turn the process around and return to where we were before our world collapsed. And how would that be possible? By penetrating the very center of the anomaly, the deepest nucleus of dead synchronicity, and arriving at the point where time is just starting to fold back into itself before the process is completed. If, inside the dead synchronicity point, each and every one of the events that have happened or will happen in the universe unfold, then surely it must be possible to gain access to the moment when something or someone triggered the catastrophe and stop it. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're talking about time travel. Yes, I'm talking about the possibility of accessing the past to save our present and our future, of turning the great wave and all its consequences into a mere nightmare that never actually happened. The report talks about the hypothetical existence of a door leading into the very heart of the dead synchronicity point, a door to each and every one of the snapshots of the past, present, and future of our universe. And if, through that door, we had a chance to access the precise instant when everything went haywire, then we might be able to change things. Michael, that's what we've got to focus on in whatever time we have left. But I have to continue studying this report. I'm sure there are more answers in it. And you have got to help me. You're telling me that the dead synchronicity point is the origin of all this chaos? That our only chance of salvation is a theoretical journey to the past? Or sooner or later we'll all be obliterated? Like those poor dissolved? That's right, Michael. So we'd better get to work on it as soon as possible. By the way, the report also mentions another very interesting thing about the Dissolved. What is it? It seems that in their trances, through their trips to the underground highways, the sick form a strange relationship with each other. It's as if the disease unites them, regardless of any physical distance that might separate them. The report is very unclear on this point, but it seems as if the Dissolved are somehow linked, connected, my god. That can't be. Remember. Please, remember. Everything fits now. Everything makes sense. Please. Enough. My head. Emily asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. We're connected. Michael, what's going on? Chris, get one of those tests ready. Fast. But what for? You don't think that you're also... Do as I say. Okay. Give me your hand. It's positive. Michael, you're sick. You're a dissolved. No. That can't be. No. Emily, is that you? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. Is that really you? Where, where am I? Yes, Michael, it's me. You are on the underground highways. <laughs>